Hello everybody, my name is Astya Nagilulu. I work at Bailey Gadsden Elementary as a maths specialist. Are you ready? Let's do some math. Good morning. Uh, today we are going to work on a, a puzzle. I will show how to draw the puzzle template and then I will explain the rules. So this puzzle is appropriate uh, from second grade to to anyone could do it to high school college etc so first i'm going to show you i'm going to tell you the name of this puzzle the name of this puzzle is called separate the consecutive numbers puzzle separate the consecutive numbers puzzle so here i'm going to show you how to draw this puzzle so watch me carefully first i draw three circles parallel to each other and then three more circles on this side and then two more circles here in the middle now I have eight circles I'm gonna fill this eight circle with eight numbers but there is a rule I will tell you the rules next first let me finish the template. Okay, I'm going to connect this, the outer circles to create a hexagon. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six lines. Now I'm going to connect the interior, making lines. I need 12 lines, six on the outside and then six inside. So these circles are connected by a line. These two circles are connected by a line. These two are connected by a line. So here's the rules. You're gonna put these numbers one to eight so that consecutive numbers will not be next to each other. For example, I can put one here, two here, three here, four here, five here, separate them. So they will not be touched by a line. Okay? All right, so make eight circles, three, three, and then two, and then connect the outside circles and then connect the inside circles. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you a completed work. Okay, now let's look at this student's work. This student put all the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's perfect. Each number is written once. That's also good. Now let's look if this student separate consecutive numbers. Here, do you see two and three? Two and three are connected by this line, so that's a mistake. One and two are connected by this line. Five and six are connected by this line. And six and seven are connected by this line. The rest of the numbers are good. 3 and 4 are separated. 8 and 7 are separated. And yeah, so this is to make few mistakes. So when you do this puzzle, do not give up. If you complete this puzzle, you will feel really, really happy. So don't afraid to challenge yourself. The most important is keep 
trying, keep trying again. Thank you. That's all for today. Hello students. Today we are going to work on area and perimeter. To start with area and perimeter, first I will remind you what perimeter and area are. Perimeter is a distance around a closed figure. So we are measuring, for example, if I draw this a rectangle and measure the distance from here all the way here and all the way down around this closed figure. That's a perimeter. So perimeter is for you to remember is like a fence. When you put a fence, you put fence around the perimeter of the field. So this is perimeter. For example, if we say this is seven meter and this is three meter, we know rectangle has two pairs of parallel lines. So this and this are parallel. They are equal. They are congruent in size. And these two, this side and this side are congruent, equal. So if I know this is seven meter, this is also seven meter. If I know this is three meter, this is also three meter. So in fourth grade, you are going to use a formula to find perimeter. So there are two different ways you could do. Perimeter equals length plus width plus length plus width. This is L. Or you could write P equals two times length plus width. Yeah? Let's use this one. So I know one of the lengths is seven. We have two sevens and we have two threes. So perimeter equals seven meter plus three meter plus seven meter plus three meter equals 10 plus 10, which is 20 meters. So uh, perimeter is one dimensional. I just, if for example, if I break these corners and put these four line, line segments next to each other and measure the distance that equals the perimeter. So if you are using the second formula, you could write perimeter equals two times uh, length is seven plus three, which is 10, two times 10 is 20. 20 what? 20 meters, okay? This is perimeter. Now, let's learn about area. Area is the inside part. If you remember in third grade, for example, we cut rectangles into array and multiply the length, which is here, and the width, which is here. So the length is, now let's count the squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the width, one, two, three, four, four units, because we don't know this is centimeter, inches, meter, or kilometer, so we call it units when we don't know. So seven units here. So the area is how many squares are inside. How many units squares are inside? Area is measured by square units. So in third grade, we count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. There has to be an easier way. The easier way we learn it in third grade is to multiply the widths and the lengths. In this case, the width is four units and the length is seven units. So area is written in square units. So each ones are one square unit here. All right, two square units, three square units. So you need to write it in square units. Four times seven is 28, 28 square unit. You could write it like that, or you could write it 28 square units. Okay, so this is area. Now, let's see if we can find the perimeter of the same shape. The perimeter again, this is seven units. This is four units. So it's like counting by seven four times. So seven, 14, 21, and 28 units. That was the area, but the perimeter is, we are just measuring the outside. Four units here. Four plus seven is 11. I have the same thing, 11 on the other side. So 11 and 11 equals 22 units. See, we have different answer. The perimeter is 22 units. The area is 28 square units. Okay, I will give you one more example. Let's find area of this. Okay, here you can go back and pause the video and go back and look at it. So I'm gonna erase this. Uh, actually, I can show it to you right here. Okay. All right, let's figure out the perimeter and the area of this closed figure. So I will write the numbers. In this case, we can count the units. So the unit square, the length equals one, two, three, six, nine, 12, 13. I was counting by three. 13 units. The width is this. I will count two, four, six, eight, nine. The width is nine units. Okay. So this is nine units. This is the width on this side is also nine units. And on the top, the length is 30 units. On the bottom, the length is also 13 units. So to find the perimeter of this closed figure, I will add these four numbers. So again, perimeter equals length, which is 13 units, plus the width is nine units, I'll write this one more time, 13 units plus nine units will give us the perimeter. So 13 and nine is 22. So I have two times 22. 22 plus 22 is 44 units. Are you following me? Yes. So the perimeter. Now the area. The area we know by multiplying the side lengths, we can figure out how many square units are there in this rectangle. That's 13 times 9. I will use the area model to multiply 13 times 9 quickly here. All right. To do that, I'll draw simple 
area model to figure out 13 times 9. So 9 goes here, but I'm going to break the 13 into 10 and 3. So that way it's much easier and understandable. 9 times 10 is 90. 9 times 3 is 27. If I add these two together, make 170 left over. So the answer is 117, 117 units, unit square, square unit. Yeah? 9 times 13. That's how many squares we had in this rectangle. Okay? So, we have 90 squares and we have 27 squares here. Together, 170 square units. This is an assignment for you. Find the area and perimeter of three things in your house. Like cereal box, top of a table, your laptop, your floor, a window, picture frame, any rectangular shape. For example, this book, I'm gonna measure it. I'm gonna measure the width. The width is nine inches. I'm gonna measure the, the length. Length is 11 inches. So the width is nine and the length is 11 inches inches so I can find the area 11 times 9 or I could find the perimeter by adding 11 plus 9 plus 11 plus 9 to find the perimeter of this book and the area of this book you do the same thing find rectangular shape items at home so if you don't have a ruler you could use your finger you could use your foot you could use pencils any material that's going to be the unit you are going to write. If you calculate the perimeter using fingers, write fingers. That's the unit. Okay? Thank you. Have fun finding three items or more. And make sure you understand what perimeter and area are. I will see you another time. Hello, students. Today, our learning is multiplying tens by a whole number. To help us, I have two things here on the board. One is a dollar bill, a dime, and a penny. And then on the bottom you see a base 10 blocks. So these base 10 blocks represent one whole. This base 10 blocks here represent tens. Because 10 of this make one hole. There are 10 tenths in one hole. Okay? So let me give you an example. One and two tenths, one and two tenths times three. Or three copies of one and two tens. So it looks like this. Three copies. Two, three, it looks like this. One and two ten plus one and two ten plus one and two ten or three times two tens it will give us one two three holes and one two three four five six six tens so one and two tens multiplied by three equals three and sixteen I'm going to draw area model to show to you. 
This is one hole and this is two ten. Both multiplied by three. So three times one hole is three. Three times two tens is six tens. So together three and six ten. Three and six ten. Okay. Let's do another example. So let's let's practice one more multiplying tens by a whole number. Okay. Here I put an example. Two and three tens times four. Four copies of two and three tens. In fraction, I wrote it this way. Two and three tens times four. This is one group of two and three tens. I don't have enough material to show to you, but I will draw a picture. A drawing looks like this. I drew two and three tens four times. Four groups of two and three tens. One group, two, three, four groups of two and three tens. Now let's count the ones. Let's count the ten first. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten tens equals one whole. So I'm going to regroup the tens like this. Oops, here. This is ten tens. I will trade it for one. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine holes and one, two, tens. So in decimal I will write like this, fraction I will write nine and two tens. Fraction, decimal. And the visual model, okay? Now I'm gonna write an assignment for you to do. Okay, students, this is your assignment. You are going to multiply two and sixteenths by five. In fraction, it looks like this, the same problem. Two and sixteenths times five. If it's money, it looks like this. Two dollar and sixty cents times five, okay? I want you to draw a picture of these base 10 blocks. These are, these represent ones, this represents tens. Okay? Have fun with your assignment and I'll see you next time.